Strongman General Khalifa Haftar wants Tripoli. Together with his Libyan National Army, he hopes to capture the country's capital and take full control of this oil-rich nation. And it's partly because of oil that Russia and Turkey have waded in on either side of this conflict, with Turkey behind Fayez al-Sarraj's UN-backed government and Russia supporting Haftar. Moscow has denied reports it sent mercenaries to reinforce the general's fighters. But on Thursday, Turkey confirmed it had started deploying troops to help al-Sarraj in Tripoli, despite a UN arms embargo. Some developing news to bring you. The US military just announcing a number of service members were actually treated for injuries after the missile attacks. This is going back to the missile attacks uh, on bases in Iraq earlier this month. Here's Gabriel Elizondo in Washington. I know there's little information coming out at the moment, but what, what are you hearing? Yeah, the U.S. military just confirming within the last few minutes that there were eight U.S. service members that were injured on that missile attack at the Al-Assad Air Base uh, in Iraq last week. Now, I should point out, it does not appear to be serious injuries. Nevertheless, this is what the Pentagon is telling us. They say that uh, after the missile attacks on the base, uh, many of the service members were screened for concussions. Syrian artillery and Russian jets in an all-out assault by Bashar al-Assad's forces in northwest Syria. The attacks flattened buildings south of Aleppo where rescuers pulled a small girl from the rubble, covered in dust, but alive. Despite denials from Russia, human rights groups report that Russian and Syrian forces resumed bombing civilian areas, destroying hospitals and schools, even though a ceasefire was supposed to go into effect on January 12th. Villages are in ruins and children and rescue workers are among the dead. The United Nations says 350,000 Syrians have fled their homes since December to escape the violence. President Trump and China's Vice Premier Liu He signed phase one of what has been called a historic agreement between the U.S. and China, significantly easing tensions between the two trading partners. President Trump characterized the negotiations as tough, honest and respectful, adding that the U.S. is righting the wrongs between the two countries in ways past presidencies have failed. Phase one of the U.S.-China trade deal addresses decades-old sore points relating to technology transfers, intellectual property, agriculture and manufacturing. The agreement has China buying $200 billion worth of U.S. goods over the span of two years to include U.S. soybeans, pork, agricultural products, manufacturing goods, energy products, and services. China also pledged to refrain from devaluing the Chinese yuan. To the dramatic rescue of an 11-year-old girl kidnapped on her way home from school. An amber alert had just gone out, neighbors and strangers spreading the word. And tonight here, what one couple did to save her. We have remarkable images this evening as they chase her abductor's car, never letting that car out of their sight. Tonight, police have taken the suspect into custody, and here's ABC's Ariel Reshef. Yes, it's him. It's him. It's him. Tonight, those heart-stopping moments as neighbors in Springfield, Massachusetts, chase down an accused abductor. This is a blue Honda Civic, and they're, they're doing 100 miles an hour right now. Police say inside that car, 11-year-old Charlotte Mosia. He just blew through red lights. He's blowing through red lights. The suspect, 24-year-old Miguel Rodriguez, arraigned on multiple charges, including kidnapping and assault. Authorities say video shows a car similar to the suspect's driving down the street the day before the kidnapping.
Two years ago, Israeli, U.S. and Egyptian companies signed an estimated $20 billion natural gas deal. According to the plan, U.S.-based Noble Energy and Israeli-based Direct Drilling will supply natural gas from Israeli's Tamar and Leviathan fields to Egypt's Dolphinus Company. Israel is expected to export nearly 600 million liters of gas per day to Egypt and says it is the most significant deal to emerge between Egypt and Israel since the country signed a historic peace treaty in 1979. Note that we have established an alliance in the Middle East and in the Eastern Mediterranean, an alliance that has great importance for the energy future of the state of Israel, which is becoming an energy power. From flames to flash floods. Just a week ago, staff at this nature park were protecting their animals from oncoming bushfires. Now they're having to deal with another extreme. Staff rushed koalas to safety. We'll back, mate. We'll get back. While for creatures more used to the wet, it was more about keeping them in their place. Heavy rain has fallen across New South Wales, one of the states worst affected by bushfires. In the state capital, Sydney, residents were remembering how to use an umbrella. The orange haze that had taken over the city's skyline, now cloudy grey. All right, the latest news coming in after the 22nd January death warrant is not going to be executed. The latest one coming in is for 1st February. 1st February, a fresh death warrant has been issued where the convicts, the murderers, the gang rapists of Nirbhaya would hang at 6 a.m. That's the next death warrant. The date is 1st of February. We're going to try and get in a word whether if another mercy petition later on gets rejected, will there be a new date as well? But what we can tell our viewers is that the court has now set February 1st as the new date of hanging for Nirbhaya's murderers and rapists.